you about a very significant issue. But the first one to speak is going to be Chief Andy Ray from the Bartow Police Department because we assisted Chief Ray, so he will give you the preliminary information and then I'll talk to you about the investigative side. Chief, come on up. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Andy Ray. It's A-N-D-Y-R-A-Y. -Y. I'm the police chief in Bartow. Uh, we're going to talk to you today about a, uh, an investigation that started in Bartow um, Thursday evening, the 22nd of February. Bartow officers were dispatched to the uh, Bartow Hospital, Bartow Regional Hospital, uh, to report of a child uh, that was injured and had arrived uh, in cardiac arrest. So first officers on scene. Uh, made contact in the emergency room uh, with the medical personnel there, and they were working feverishly to save this child's life. Uh, turns out that the child is a four-month-old little girl. Uh, those officers, being given some information at the scene, then contacted uh, supervision and asked for a detective. One of our detectives responded. Uh, supervisor was notified as well and uh, started an investigation there initially. It was not a great opportunity to get a lot of information because uh, the whole team at the emergency room was working to save the child's life. Um, that was a little bit uh, after 8.30 in the evening, on Thursday evening. A helicopter was uh, dispatched, a medical helicopter was dispatched and the child was uh, stabilized briefly um, and then placed on the helicopter and flown to St. Joseph's Hospital in Tampa. Our uh, detectives went over there along with supervision to get uh, some more details about the investigation and also the status of the child. Once they got there and got some answers at that point, uh, it was obvious that the, that the child had multiple injuries. And uh, uh, at that point, I contacted my colleagues at the sheriff's office, uh, spoke with the investigations major, um, and requested their assistance in the investigation. They then dispatched homicide investigators from the Bureau of Criminal Investigations at the Sheriff's Office, and uh, they arrived, were briefed, and then uh, took over the investigation at that point. Uh, very thankful, as always, for our relationship with the Polk County Sheriff's Office. Um, again, I say it every time, we work very well together here in Polk County. We uh, all know each other, we all appreciate and support each other, and we all respect each other based on the information that we have and the experience that we have. Uh, so I'm thankful for that, thankful for our partnerships. And, uh, and thankful for the outcome of this investigation. So I'm gonna turn that over now to the sheriff for the rest of the information. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, and I did owe that cooperation. That's how we work here, and we've always worked here, is we work together. And I have a very experienced homicide team, and the blessing is in the city of Bartow, they very rarely have a homicide, so they call us when they have one. So. Unfortunately, we get a lot more opportunities to investigate than most other agencies because of the vastness of the sheriff's office. But I want to introduce you to a murderer, to someone who viciously murdered his beautiful four-year-old baby girl that they refer to as Strawberry. Now, it appears to me that normal society can't understand this kind of person. Well, I can tell you from a great deal of experience that a lifelong law enforcement officer can't understand this kind of person either. But here he is, Jacob Kubai. He's 22 years of age. He and his wife had this baby just four months ago. And on February the 22nd, in the evening, Jacob Strawberry took mom to work. They dropped her off at the Texas Cattle Company in Lakeland at about five minutes to five in the afternoon. And then he went home with the baby. I might also add that mom works also at Buffalo Wild Wings. So she's working two jobs and Jacob's staying home with a baby. 
So he arrives at home, and he then, at about 20 minutes to, I guess it's about 20 minutes to 6 when he gets back home, he plays video games for a while. He discovers while he's fixing dinner that he doesn't have any chicken broth for the food, so he said he took the baby strawberry and went to Walmart. He told us this. Now, we pull the video at Walmart. He has no baby. And then we watch him shop, and then he comes through the line to self-check out with no baby. Then he goes home at about 6.54, he, so he's at Walmart less than 10 minutes. He said at 7.50 in the evening, about 7.50, he fed the baby and checked on her every 10 minutes. We thought that was a little strange. At 7.50, fed the baby, checked on her. At 8 o'clock, checked on her. At 8.10 p.m., he checked on her and found the baby unresponsive. He said he tried CPR. Investigation shows that he gave five compressions. He saw that the baby still was unresponsive, so he grabbed the baby up and drove to Bartow Regional where the Bartow Police Department was notified. As the chief said, then they flew the baby to St. Joe, and here's what they discovered at autopsy, and they discovered many of these injuries as well. They discovered that night that the baby had a skull fracture, that the child had multiple impact bruises to the forehead, that the baby had 10 ribs fractured, that she had a hemorrhage in her spine, that she had multiple layers of brain bleed. Still, the baby fought for life and lived two more days before she died. Then an autopsy was completed. And at autopsy, it gave the details our detective said they counted a minimum of 10 strikes to the forehead. Did you hear that? The baby was beaten in the forehead at least by 10 different strikes. 10 ribs were fractured, and they said they, that was, would have been from a squeezing of the child. In addition to that, this significant skull fracture to the back of the head, the medical examiner said it would have occurred by striking a hard object. The baby was literally beaten to death. And the only person that was home with the baby at the time was Jacob. We interviewed mom, and mom said the baby had no bruising when she went to work. The baby had no, was not complaining or restless as an infant would be that had significant injuries. It leaves only him. So our detectives, who are simply the very best in, on our homicide team, try to talk to him. And first, he's totally lucid goes, uh, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. We put him in a cell, told him he was going to be charged eventually with aggravated manslaughter, child abuse, aggravated child abuse. And then when we took him out of the interview room because he wanted to talk to us some more, he started saying things like, none of this is real. My wife's not real. My baby's not real. This is a fantasy. It just didn't happen. He began, began immediately playing games with us. 
He showed zero remorse. He shed not one tear. And yet he is literally beaten and squeezed his baby to death at four months old. No remorse, no emotion, nothing. Mother responded appropriately when she heard of this injury to her child and couldn't understand how it happened. <coughs> the case is still under investigation. He's locked up in the county jail and occasionally you really, really, really see people that based upon the investigation of the death of the injury, you wonder why God allows them to breathe air. Here's one that I wonder why God allows him to breathe air after you all see the investigation and what this baby was, was exposed to before she died. Any questions? That is still under investigation. We don't, we don't see any previous complaints to DCF. And obviously, we've been dealing with the instant injuries and the instant death. And we will follow up with that as before this investigation is completed to, to see if there's any older injuries. But, you know, how much older can injuries be? The baby's only four months old. So there's more work to do, more investigation to do. But at this point in the investigation, and we never say never, as you know, we have no investigative information that would lead us to believe mother participated in this or knew about it. And certainly if the baby's healthy when she goes to work and then she's called that the baby's at the hospital unresponsive, she's got as many questions as you would expect a mother to when she said, I just saw this baby just a couple hours ago when I came to work. So while she's working and trying to make ends meet, this sorry human being is home beating the child. Well, it's really subject to the best interpretation of the timeline that the detectives see. They think it was before he went to Walmart. But we've not completed the investigation yet. Our supposition is it was before he went to Walmart. Is Jeffrey aware of any mental issues that he's had previously? No, no previous mental issues. And he was totally lucid and rational until he found out what kind of trouble he was in. And then he didn't remember anything. Life has become a blank. Well. Criminal history? No criminal history. Sir, can you talk about how the injury was determined to be caused by him and not something of the environmental when he was at Walmart? Well, certainly we, certainly when you see these injuries and this baby's four months old, you know that they're a baby four months old is not mobile. So when you see 10 separate sets of bruising across the forehead, you see a fracture across the back of the head and the medical examiner said it's caused from hitting a hard object. When you see 10 ribs are broken, that's from either squeezing or beating them in the ribs. When you see that the child had a hemorrhage in the spinal column, that's just all indicative of a horrific beating. I know that it says here that it was at least one other city member before the injury got to Walmart. How was that determined through this investigation? And do you believe that there are more other people? That's still under investigation. Once again, we, we have other snippets of information that are certainly going to be followed up, but we have focused on the murder of this child and then we'll go back after we get this piece of it done and tie the loose ends of it up. When we release this information to you, 
this soon after an arrest or an investigation, you know we don't have the loose ends tied up to the investigation. Zero. Zero. Okay. We all seek answers for this. We all think there's got to be an answer. There's got to be an answer. It's got to be a mistake because nobody could beat a four-month-old beautiful little girl to death. He can, and he did. Okay? Thank you.